So finally, we are going to start working on Fleet MS version 3 today. And this is the 10 uh, steps you are going to be taking today. This is called Initial Setup Tasks. And it's going to be really straightforward. I'm going to be making it step by step. And just to remind you, what we are trying to achieve is to build an end-to-end -end application based on Angular or UI, Node.js API, and then the database will be PostgreSQL uh, and bits of MongoDB NoSQL document store database. So today we are going to set up everything we need. And the first thing we are going to be doing today is we are going to have VS Code and IntelliJ. We want to make sure these two are installed because VS Code is better to work with it in Angular. And not that um, IntelliJ, we are going to be working, creating the API there using um, in IntelliJ. We are also going to install Node.js, install and test Node.js, install and test Angular, install and test PostgreSQL, and also the UI application called pgAdmin. We are going to create a new Node.js application, open this application in IntelliJ, push to, push to GitHub repository, and we are going to create an Angular application, uh, push to GitHub, GitHub repository, and then we are going to connect Node.js to PostgreSQL via IntelliJ. The reason is because the UI, which is Angular, connects Node.js, which is in the middle, and then uh, Node.js via IntelliJ connects to the uh, database at the lower part. So we want to connect, make sure that we can connect to the database from IntelliJ. All right, so let's get started. I normally like to say that before I start, let me just show you the features of Fleet MS version 3. This is a template. We are going to be setting it up. And now this feature says UI. Now we are going to be adopting API UI approach. The reason is because if later on we don't want to use Angular, we can decide to create a React UI and simply attach it to our application and shift the Angular away. So we, we have kind of decoupling. This is different from microservices because sometimes they are mixed up. For now, we are just trying to decouple the UI and the API uh, so that they are completely decoupled, not even loosely coupled, but separate, separated completely. Spring Boot and Time Leaf couples the two UI and API together. We don't want to do that this time. Now, some of the features will be like more table styles, paging and sorting becomes easier, UI library like Angular Material, we're going to be using PrimeNG UI libraries. We are going to be doing a whole lot of things like file select, um, generate PDF reports, uh, security features like single sign-on or visualization becomes more easier. File upload async, we can upload the image and view it. Form validation becomes easier. Email integration, post uh, messages, uh, all this thing becomes easier. And there, there, are, there are also some page samples like invoice, profile, e-commerce. I normally like to say, let's just take a look at this thing because it kind of reminds us that um, there is something or direction we are going. So if I go to data tables now, you can see that we can easily do uh, paging right here. If you look at this place, we can easily do paging. We can also do sorting very easily online in case of Spring Boot, because in this case now, everything happens, uh, this happens in the client side. And if I go down, I will also show you this page sample. This is invoice, I've mentioned it before. We can now generate PDF report and submit payment to um, another server. And we have a project page. We can actually track project uh, progress of project in case we want to do a, something related to project management. I even want to kind of track our progress as we build Fleet MS version 3. And we also have this profile is going to be much, much better than this. We are going to be doing it. We have timeline, we have settings. This timeline, very, very important feature that is kind of easier to work with with libraries um, integrate, that can be integrated with um, Angular. All right, so let's go ahead to get started right now. So step one says create a folder. So we have to create an empty folder. I want to place everything in this folder. I call this empty folder Fleet MS V3. So you can also create a folder anywhere in your system. I don't know if I've mentioned, please remember to subscribe to my channel. If this is your first time, please don't miss a class. I'm going to be trying to do one class a day. If you can walk for 30 minutes every day, discipline yourself, just make out 30 minutes every day, sometimes on weekends, sometimes not on weekends. But every day we have to do one lesson. We hope that in one month, in, in 
March, we should be able to complete this application. So subscribe to my channel. If you have challenges, let me know immediately because if I know I can now, maybe after a few hours or even the next day, I'll be able to help you fix it. So we create a folder and the next thing we want to do, I can actually close this one at this point. I've created an empty folder and we want to ensure we have VS Code and IntelliJ installed. So if I go to my finder, I can just say VS Code. You can see I have VS Code installed. Okay, I'm not teaching you how to install VS Code. You should be able to do it by yourself at this time. So I have VS Code installed right here. I also want to have check that I have IntelliJ installed. You can see I have IntelliJ IDEA installed as well. These applications are free. Download them and install. Actually, I can actually show you uh, how to get them. So IntelliJ download and you can easily uh, go to the website, download it. I think it should be for free. You download it and install. So we have it here, uh, this 30 days free trial, but the community edition, which is this one in black, is actually free uh, completely. And VS Code download as well. You have to download and install, depending on your operating system, if you are using Mac or Windows. All right, so let's proceed to the next part. Install and test Node.js. Now, if you install Node.js, it's not going to give you any icon on your desktop or on your applications list. Um, so, if you want to install Node.js, you simply follow the same procedure. Simply say Node.js, Node.js downloads. And you have the page to download Node.js from here. You simply download it based on your operating system download and install is also quite straightforward installation and it doesn't give you any ui interface now we want to test that node.js is installed to test that node.js is installed i'm going to open my terminal and simply type node version if i open my terminal i simply enter node version so i'm going to say nodes dash dash version and it tells me 14.7.0 uh, as you can see so not that yes is installed all right so the next thing we want to do is install and test it node.js we now want to install and test angular and i'm going to also go to angular download uh, angular download or install angular install so Angular, you can actually install it simply around the command line. It also does not give you any UI, um, uh, uh, any icon on your desktop or your applications list. Simply run this code after you install Node.js. Don't install, actually you can't install Angular without Node.js if you want to use this command right here. So simply copy this command onto your terminal and just run the command. It's going to actually install Angular for you. I actually did install Angular, so it's actually it will it will not uh, complete because I already have Angular installed. So let me clear my console and now let's see if Angular is installed. I'm going to say ng dash dash version, and now you can see that it tells me Angular is installed. Angular CLI 13.2.4 as of uh, February 2000 uh, February 2022. There is a version. Be the latest version for now. All right, let's see the next step. Install and test PostgreSQL, and it gives you a UI called PG Admin. Let's follow the procedure as well. Again, I forgot to mention, I have procedures uh, available. You can check the description of this video. You can find link to my website, and you can find procedure for this course. So if you find my website, simply scroll down to I wrote this recently and you can see Fleet MS V3 part one. Open it up and you can see the procedures here. So for now we are doing only the installation. So basically we are doing uh, this install and test Northern JS and so on. This button here, this yellow button here says buy me a coffee. Please click on it and also buy me a coffee. I will appreciate it very, very much. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's go ahead to continue from where we stopped. We want to install and test 
uh, PostgreSQL. So let's go back to the browser and I'm going to go to Google and I'm going to say uh, PostgreSQL download. Now this is very important because there are different versions of, of PostgreSQL. Once you get to the installer, you want to choose um, your uh, version, or whether Windows or Mac, and then you want to install it, and then um, it gives you the PG Admin um, application. The PG Admin application is like this: it's an elephant uh, icon, an elephant avatar or icon or, or insignia. So if you open it, let's just make sure that it's installed. It's going to give us the UI for managing PostgreSQL databases. But later on, we are going to be managing these databases actually from IntelliJ so that we don't have a whole lot of things opening up. So it's op it opened up in my second screen. So I'm going to just drag it here. And this is it right here. So when you are installing it, you are going to, it's going to prompt you to enter a, an admin password. So I did enter the admin password and this is the password I entered and it gives you something like this. For now, don't worry about creating any database. We're gonna do that together a little later. Don't jump any step and don't think you know it because there may be small things that you're gonna miss out and then it's gonna be a problem for you a little later. So simply install PostgreSQL and for now, just make sure that it opens up and your password works. All right, so the next step says create a new Node.js application. Now this is where we actually start working. Now, if I go to the empty folder, because I told you create an empty folder, I'm going to right click and say, um, I think I can, yeah, so I can, I'll simply go back and right click on the folder. Actually, you need to open the uh, terminal at that folder, or you simply navigate by command prompt uh, to the folder you created. So in this fleet MS V3 folder, I will have two applications. The one is for Angular UI, the second one is for Node API. So I'm going to call this one uh, Fleet MS V3 uh, Node uh, Node Angular. Let's click. Uh, yeah, let's create a node first. Node API. Okay. Fleet MS version three Node JS. Uh, uh, node API, let's leave it at this node API. I'm going to hit, uh, actually, <laughs> I don't even know what I'm doing. So we are trying to create a new application. So we are going to first create a folder. So I'm going to say mkdir. Actually, you can create this folder by right clicking inside that directory and say new folder. So it's the same thing. So I'm just creating a new folder using make directory. So I'm going to hit enter. So if I go back to this place, so we have this empty folder, there is nothing inside. You want to set up now node application right inside this folder. So let's go back to the command prompt. So in the command prompt, while inside this directory, so I'm going to cd inside that directory. So I'm going to say cd inside that directory, cd. So I'm inside that directory now. I'm going to say npm init npm init, that is the command you are going to give. I'm going to hit enter and it's going to start the workflow for creating a new node.js application. What is the name of the package? It normally has to be the name of the folder that contains it. So I'm going to hit enter key. Version 1.0.0 is okay. And description, I'm going to call it node API for fleet MS version three. Okay. Entry point in Let's.js, that is fine. Test command, just leave it empty. Git repository, uh, for now, let's leave it empty. We are going to uh, upload to Git after now, so let's not complicate anything. Keywords, leave it empty. Author, I'm going to actually put my name, kind on the tag pro. Um, everything is okay, so yes. All right, so we have a new node application right now. If you go to the folder we created and open it, you have one package.json application there. Okay, so we've created a new node application and the next step says, uh, open the node application in IntelliJ. So let's open uh, IntelliJ. I'm using IntelliJ. We are going to open the node 
uh, application using IntelliJ. All right, so IntelliJ window opens up like this. I'm going to simply say open or import. And when, it's, like, when I say open and import, uh, I have to navigate to our nodes.js application we actually initialized. So this is the folder. I'm going to say open. So now it's opening on my second screen. So I'm going to bring it in here. So this node application now is an empty application, just has package.json. Uh, let's say for now that we have it open, right? So this is our application. <laughs> you just have package.json simply contains um, all these things we specified. So this is fine. You don't have to worry about it for now. We have created and tested that we have a new node application created here. Okay. So we open this application in, in IntelliJ. We now want to push to GitHub repository. Now, this step pushing to GitHub repository, um, you also need to know about it. You simply need to create a, a new repository in GitHub. When you create a new repository, let me take you through how to do that because I mentioned I'm gonna teach you source control in GitHub. So once you create a new repository, you, go, you want to create a new repository, go to plus sign and say new repository and give it a name. So I'm just giving it a name, blah, blah, blah. I already have a repository created, but I'm just showing you how to create a repository and say create repository. Once you create a repository, it's going to give you this link. Copy this link to your clipboard because we are going to use it there. So this repository, I'm going to delete it. Actually, the repository that I have already created, I'm going to just show you, please, msv3. So there are two of them, two repositories, Fleet msv3 Angular UI and Fleet msv3 uh, Node API. So we are now in Node API, and you can see that we have the, the, the repository link here, okay? So we now want to push this application to this repository. If you go to this repository now, simply, if you want to go, simply go to the link. Um, so, one second, click them as, okay. So this repository currently is empty. There is nothing inside. So we want to push something inside this repository. Um, so to do that, I'm going to come back to my PowerPoint. And this is a repository, I think. For the Angular, it should be this one. So I'm going to uh, copy, copy the copy it right like this. Now I'm going back to uh, to IntelliJ because we want to now push our node application to GitHub. So I'm going to click on terminal here, and here I'm going to say git init, git init. Uh, I'm going to say git add star and git remote uh, git I, I think I have to say, say git commit um, minus m sorry minus m minus m initial commit okay so this is fine let's see um, so git commit, initial commit, so take out one git from here. Okay, so this is fine. And I'm going to now say git remote, uh, remote add origin. I don't know if it's git add remote origin or git remote add origin. Uh, I'm gonna check, so let's check. So if you go back to your uh, repository, how say it says git add origin, git remote add origin, so I think I'm correct git remote at origin and specify the git um, the, the, um, the git link um, or the git url and hit enter and now i'm going to say git push origin master and it's going to actually push to github repository online so if i go back online to github repository um, so if I go back, uh, we have to now check that it is pushed. So if I go to click here, you see that there is something there now. You can say it says one minute ago. You can see right here it says one minute ago I pushed something there. So we have completed this part. Let's continue 
to check what next we have to do. So the next thing we want to do say um, um, we push the GitHub repository. Now we want to create a new Angular application and also push it to GitHub repository. But before I do that, let me jump to step 10. The reason is because once you start working in Angular, uh, it kind of uh, uh, ramps up the CPU, uh, um, it puts workload on the CPU and that's good. So I'm going to um, go to step 10. So I'm going to IntelliJ, we want to connect Node.js to PostgreSQL. So I'm going to come here, you see here we have database. So just say you have at this extreme right, extreme right corner you have database. Simply click on this plus sign and say data source. In your data source, you have a whole lot of things. Choose, um, choose, choose PostgreSQL uh, from the list. It should be here, you can see. So once you choose PostgreSQL, it's going to give you a window to enter the uh, parameters for PostgreSQL. So my username is root. I, uh, it's actually Postgres, <laughs> uh, Postgres. Because when you install PostgreSQL for the first time, you don't have, if you've not created any user, the default user that is Postgres. So enter it in this place. The password you uh, set up when you are installing PostgreSQL, you also enter it here. So I'm going to say post. Uh, I can remember the passwords. Uh, yeah, I wanted to say test connection, but I forgot. So it's trying to connect and you can see it's connected, right? And it tells me database, and you have a whole lot of things here. But if you want to see your tables, because there is one default table, but um, you see flyaway, you have a, a number of things. I actually added this table when I was doing a bit of testing. But for you, you might not see anything here. Okay, so we've done step 10. All right, so let's now go to create our Angular application right now. And again, I'm going to this time open. Um, sorry, yeah, I'm going to open in uh, this time VS Code. So we are going to build an Angular application in VS Code because we build the API uh, Node application in IntelliJ. All right, so um, so I've, I've uh, started IntelliJ. Now I'm going to go to our folder, this uh, directory we are working with and go back here and inside this directory we already have one folder for the node API so I'm going to create a new uh, a new one fleet and uh, fleet msb tree uh, angular UI okay fleet msb tree angular UI okay so so this folder is going to hold our Angular application. So I'm going back to um, Node.gl to IntelliJ. So let's open this folder in IntelliJ and create a new app, a new Angular application. So I'm going to say File, Open Folder, and I'm going to choose the Fleet MSB tree. Actually, we may not. We never needed to create uh, this other folder, so I'm actually going to delete it because we are going to create it uh, when we are creating the Angular application. So I'm going to actually delete it. Okay. So if I now go to uh, yeah, okay. So we have this. This is now where where I want to go. So I'm going to my terminal. I'm going to say new terminal and. I actually should close this. Sorry, let so me close. So from new terminal, uh, I'm going to actually navigate to the same folder we had been working with. So let me see if I can get there. And the easiest way to get there is simply to keep that folder open. So let me just keep it open like this. So in that way, it's going to just be in the parts because doing CD and, and C, CD is always a problem. So to create a new Angular application, I'm going to first play my console and say ng new and specify the name of the Angular application I want to create and hit the enter key. Now creating an Angular application uh, is also similar to how you create um, a node application. You have to follow the prompt and then it's going to scaffold and create all the necessary files for you. I like using SCSS, but you can also use CSS as well. So I'm going to hit the enter key. 
and let's wait for a second and this application will be created again i'm going to go and copy the i'm um, going to uh, the github repository online and let me go to the angular application and let me copy the directory so i'm going to go here Fleet ms v3 uh, for the angular ui this time i'm going to copy the JRL directory here and i'm going back to our uh, VS Code and it successfully created the application. So I'm going to navigate inside the application. If I say ls, let's just make sure the name. So I'm going to say cd fleet ms uh, uh, msv3 angular ui. Okay, so we are inside this angular application. So we can actually now open it. So I'm going to say file close folder and then I'm going to actually open this Angular application we created. I'm going to say open folder. I'm going to now choose this Angular application we created. By the way, if you go to the folder, you'll see that we now have two different folders as before because Angular actually creates the folder for you. Okay, so this is the file structure of the Angular application. If you look, if you listen to the sound, you see that my CPU fan is coming up. So I'm going to kind of quickly round off. So let's quickly push to GitHub and then we continue uh, in the next class later on. So I'm going to go to new terminal. I'm going to say, I'm going to say git, uh, git init. Uh, git init is going to be git init star. Uh, okay, so git commit um, minus n. So git add star first, I think. Uh, so the next one is git commit minus n first commit. Okay, so yeah, so nothing to commit, it says. Um, so now I'm going to push to GitHub. So let me, uh, let's go to look for okay so let's see if i can get to this place before the cpu fan uh makes a lot of noise so this is the uh the the github uh, repository so i'm going back to um uh, to vs code i'm going to say git add remote origin i think and uh so it's Actually, git remote add origin. That's the uh, the command. Git remote add. So git remote dash v. Okay. So let's now push. Uh, let's now push this application. Uh, to the repository. So I'm going to say git push origin master. All right, so it actually pushed this, uh, the files to GitHub. So let's go to GitHub just to verify that is there. So fleet damage version triangular UI and we have everything right there. So we have an SRC here, uh, we have our asset environment. So successfully we've completed part one of our fleet MS version 3 and I want to give you a thumbs up for coming this far if you don't have any challenge at this point hopefully we can make it through together in the next part we are now going to obtain our template I already showed you this template before now uh, the admin temp uh, the admin LTE template I can just show you one more time so the admin LTE template we want to obtain it and then uh, set it up or integrate it with Angular so this template right here so I want to thank you for viewing. If you have challenges, please leave me a comment in the comment box below this video. If you also uh, like this video, uh, give a thumbs up to this video. Activate notification if you want to get notified when I make new lessons anytime. So I remain kind on the tech pro and we see you in the next part.